I'm a divine child of the great mother, father, God. A divine child of the great mother, father, God. I'm a divine child of the great mother, father, God. A divine child of the great mother, father, God. Hello. I Back with your moon sign reading. Just for a... Um, refresher so that you know you know what's going on is basically this is from the great mother speaks oracle deck and this deck is specifically designed to help heal mama drama trauma mama drama trauma is a planetary disorder it's a condition in which the mother projects unhealed aspects of herself onto her child causing emotional and or physical trauma in cases where she is so committed to her dysfunction or as a great mother likes to say is unwilling unable or unavailable to heal her own mdt because it is a cycle loving detachment is required so loving detachment is accepting what is you know she's sick she is unable to love you in the way that you need to be loved and support you in the way that you need to be supported. You establish those boundaries the way you need to based on your particular situation. But loving detachment is a practice. It's a practice of accepting what is, that the condition is what it is in your life and it is manifesting what it is and accepting that with a gratitude, accepting that with an appreciation for the fact that you are being able to learn more about yourself and to grow through your moon sign, which is basically your soul sign. You know, the sun sign is the physical personality, basically. It's what we do. The sun is what we do. It's great father energy, the law, the logos, the word. Great mother is the Holy Spirit. Great mother is the vortex, is the void. And so it's our emotion. It's what we don't see. Okay, it's our soul. It's our intuitive space. And so we talk about emotion in terms of the moon sign, your reactions, your thoughts, your feelings, but also in terms of your intuition, which is different. And that is your Vedic moon sign, which is traditionally a sign in progression to your moon sign. So if your moon sign is Taurus, well, then your um, Vedic moon sign is going to be Aries. It's 24 degrees, and so it is possible with signs being 30 degrees that your Vedic moon sign is Aries as well. So you want to check the links below because you might be Aries, Aries. So these readings are based on um, your Western moon sign, but are going to give you some intuitive insights from your general, what would be a sign before, your Vedic moon sign. So we're looking at the house of... Libra and the house of Libra is traditionally the seventh house in astrology and so of course in the Vedic that is going to be Virgo traditionally the sixth house so um, most of you Libra moon sign people are going to have a Vedic Virgo moon sign and so that means that you're going to be feeling intuitively a lot of sixth house energy and so we're going to talk about that in your reading for this new moon now your new moon readings are for you to really get a sense of who you want to be this moon cycle with your loving detachment what is it that you need to accept in your life as it is and appreciate as it is right here and right now because healing is the end of conflict. More specifically, it's the end of internal conflict. So we are experiencing a lot of external conflict in the world. We see it everywhere. And that is because we are all battling ourselves internally. That's how we know it's a planetary disorder. Everybody has some form of not feeling loved, not feeling nurtured and cared for. And so we're projecting this need onto others by what I call demand love okay it's, it's just demanding to be loved the way you want to be when you want to be how you want to be loving detachment is releasing that it's asserting yes i need love but let me detach from my structure from my limitations from my perceived notions of how that love needs to be manifested or shown to me western moon sign is emotional because it is your moon sign, but more specifically, we just focus on emotion and not intuition with the Western moon sign because the Western moon is earth centric. So it's based on you this lifetime. OK, and how you're feeling in this moment. New moon wishes are based on how you're feeling in this moment. 
How are you feeling in this moment in relation to where you want to feel 28, 29 days from now? That's what your new moons are generally based on. And then more specifically, new moon wishes are made with the Western moon sign because they're based on how you feel. And so how are you feeling about Libra related issues? How are you feeling about your relationships with others? Okay, how is the relationship with yourself manifesting in those relationships personally and professionally? And what needs to be tweaked? Well, I want to have more productive relationships with people in my workplace. And in order for me to do that, I need to be, I want to feel, be more considerate toward those that I work with. It's a good example of a Libra new moon wish. And so this reading is going to give all signs um, a perspective on exactly how to do those new moon wishes, looking at your emotions. But then also because each card does have a chakra, it's going to specifically look at the chakra of your general Vedic moon sign in relationship to what Great Mother is sharing with you that is coming through intuitive through that Holy Spirit space and guiding you toward your direction over the next 28 days. So enjoy your reading. Thanks for watching. Hello Taurus Gemini Moon Sign people. It has been a while since we last uh, did a reading here, but this is your Libra New Moon reading and um, your Western Moon Sign in Gemini has a more than likely Taurus Vedic Moon Sign. And Taurus is, of course, ruled by the heart chakra. So we're going to look in your reading where we have um, heart chakra cards. And your phase right now for Gemini is um, a waning um, uh, gibbous moon. Okay. And so this waning gibbous moon for you. Oh, my knees. <laughs> this waning. Okay, now I'm seated and comfortable with your waning give this moon explanation. Right now, Libra is in this new moon. And so Gemini right now is in its waning give this moon, which is about you being kind of in this giving and receiving mode energetically, emotionally, your frequency is really open to receiving what you have released from the full moon and doing so in a generous manner you're giving what you don't need anymore so in the real world that could just manifest as you doing you know some fall cleaning or spring cleaning if you're in the southern hemisphere and you know you're giving away things you know you just kind of like this energy that's coming through is really powerful for you and this time of year tends to be that way for you um in general uh this giving and receiving energy of the waning gibbous moon this heart chakra energy with your vedic heart chakra ruled by venus which rules taurus your vedic moon sign as well as um libra is an energy that is now really having to open up to purification so we see the heart chakra here in the card of coventina in the position of facilitating the release and so what's facilitating your release right now is a purification of what you know you know you know you know for example that there are some things that need to be cleaned from your life and that you are doing that and so emotionally and particularly with the vedic intuitively what that translates to for you is Uttaraguni and hasta energy those are the two nakshatras that this moon is in at this particular time on the cusp between the 8th and the 9th of October. Both of these energies are obviously in Virgo energy at this particular time and they have to do with relationships. They have to do with um, really loving people, getting along with people and, and preferring to be in committed relationships, particularly with Uta Rafael Guni. So much so, there can be issues of control. There can be issues of manipulation that causes challenges um, in relationships, but no matter what, the relationship is important, and so that it can be the perpetuation, for example, of toxic relationships. And so Great Mother's coming through with this heart chakra, intuitive energy, that where you are feeling at this particular time for you, Gemini moon sign people that those 
toxic relationships or cords need to be released. There needs to be focus on them. This is the wash and brush up card in the Wizard of Oz. I'm not sure if you can see that very well. When the Dorothy and the three arrive at the door and they are immediately greeted with an entourage to take them to be washed up before they go to see Oz. And so before you go to make your request for this new moon in Virgo Libra. It's really important for you to honor this purification uh, process for you. Now, again, this is the waxing gibbous moon card. You are in waning. And so there is this buildup within you about this purification. So it might not be exactly clear right now, but it's extremely important. And it's important because you're approaching this new moon with a sense of frustration. There is a sense that what you are wanting to express or what you are wanting to create. There may be something you're extremely enthusiastic about. Um, maybe your children, how you're raising your children, the communication, the dialogue that you have at them at the, with them at this particular time, or just how you are shining your light in the world may be cause for... Um, drama in your life. This is when Miss Gulch comes to take Toto and Toto symbolizes Dorothy's intuition. So that creativity, that fifth house energy where uh, Virgo Libra is for you right now, Taurus, Gemini, Moon sign people, is being challenged. And this is really making you upset. But it's making you upset because you have this kind of fear about losing them because of this Uru Falguni energy. Now, the Hasta energy that's at the cusp is about the heart hand energy. And so that, that is that heart chakra energy. And for you to work this out in the physical world from your heart to your hand, from emotion to the real life of how you practically work out things, you're gonna have to really confront first quarter moon, face the challenge of what that fear is. What is this fear that you have? Rage is suppressed anger and anger is, um, you know, expressed fear. Unexpressed fear is raged and rage until it is expressed. And so we have this issue of fear. We have this root chakra issue of fear and root chakra uh, rules um, is ruled by Saturn, which rules Aquarius and Capricorn. So we know that Saturn is in Sagittarius in the sidereal right now, which is your ninth, uh, I'm sorry, which is your um, um, eighth house. So there is a real transformation that's going on for you right now, but you might not really see it because... It's, it's, it's a root. It's, it's underneath. It's coming up and it's erupting. Some of you it probably has already erupted this fear, but it's not coming up, you know, as a, uh, any type of retribution. Remember as divine children, we are dearly loved children of the great mother, father, God, who are never judged, condemned, or left alone. And so things come up in our lives so that we have a, a greater illumination about what's happening. And so with Saturn, which is the great school teacher, the grandfather clock of the cosmos, making sure the soul is on target with this evolutionary purpose for this incarnation is saying to you that there are some changes that are really important that need to be made that in relationship to how you are expressing yourself. Not that you are bad, not that you are wrong, but with the new moon being in your fifth house and looking at your creativity, looking at how you are um, uh, perhaps a new project that you have, how, how you're communicating, how you are expressing this, your enthusiasm, how it's coming across in order for you to achieve that. It's important that you face the challenge of how you're expressing yourself. Fifth chakra is ruled by Mercury communication, which is also in Virgo Libra at this time. And so that's why the communication of the enthusiasm with the children about the project or whatever that fifth house energy is for you is so important. It's very important. And we're seeing that with the scene as well with Dorothy and the witch's castle. Of course, after Miss Gulch tries to take Toto and is unsuccessful, Toto symbolizes Dorothy's intuition. So intuition, that root chakra, that Saturn saying, hey, whatever's coming up for you is not for judgment. It's coming up for your analysis. She's in the witch's castle and she has some time for that reflection. Well, first quarter, 
is about you being able to face the challenge and take action, which is what Dorothy is being confronted with when the witch is gone away to devise her demise after she refuses to give her the shoes, her ruby red slippers, which symbolize her birthright to be happy, healthy, and whole. Now, she wasn't happy back on the farm because Aunt Em wasn't able to protect her. But she realizes now it's not about Aunt Em protecting her. It's about her confronting the witch, the drama mama, and dealing with it herself. And so she's crying out to Aunt Em, I'm coming home, I'm coming home. Who in your life are you crying out to now who has been supportive to you, but because of the challenges and because of the shade that you've got from other people has kind of been swept under the rug or been kind of ignored or kind of, you know, thrown into the bucket with everybody else. And really, they didn't mean any harm. You know, um, this is really important because what Great Mother is saying is that there's a reward that is available for you if you do look at it. Again, it's not to look at it because you're bad, because you're wrong. It's to look at it because there's something in there for you. Remember, your moon is this giving and receiving moon. And so whatever you've given that you may be getting some flack about, and Dorothy was given the fact that, hey, you are not taking my intuition. I am getting out of here. And transforming that experience into a soulful journey to where she was able to see on M for who she really is, someone who loved her. But expressing that fifth chakra can be very challenging. And so Great Mother's wanting you to do the work of getting in there to figure out who those people are. What about your children? Maybe you haven't seen that has been frustrating you in the past, but they really didn't mean any harm. And maybe you know that it's not about guilt. It's not about shame. It's not about blame, but it's about receiving that now, receiving whatever little gift they were trying to give, that they were trying to share and moving on from there. Just as we see in this scene, when Oz is giving the three their rewards for, from their journey, giving the lion, the medal, the scarecrow, you know, a diploma, the tin man, a clock, the ticking clock of the heart. It may not have been exactly how they expected to receive their wishes, but the great mother's telling you with the third eye is ruled by cancer. Cancer is ruled by the moon. She's saying that Ra, the Ra card, you know, the sun god, great father energy is actually bringing forward a physical reward. Great father energy is physical. You know, your sun sign is that bombastic personality. It's how you do the emotions. Okay, and that's why most people focus on the sun sign because it's about doing. This is lunar. And so great mother's telling you that there's a reward for aligning yourself with this primordial father energy that is helping you to confront this particular fear that you have, this particular um, need. Once again, you get, you're getting in this cycle of needing people to approve of you, and it's not about them. It's not about her. It's about you. It's not about her over here. It's about you, that internal space that is really needed to um, bring forth the centering that is required. Now, this is your lunar phase, the waning gibbous. And this giving and receiving energy from a third eye perspective, great mother energy, is about alignment, ego soul alignment. And so clicking at the heels, body, mind, and soul, that centering may be... Um, well, it is the challenge because it's underneath the challenge and fear. So this is keeping you off balance. It's keeping you off balance. And so Saturn is bringing these fears up so that you can clearly see what you need to face. Okay, this is bo they're both first quarter moon cards. And so what needs to be faced is the challenge of really expressing yourself in a way that is authentic in a way that um, really speaks for the journey that you've been through. And maybe you even speaking your own praises when others may not. 
you know, you've gone through this journey and maybe you have expected other people to acknowledge you and you haven't. You speak it yourself, you know, say, you know, I've really been through this, uh, kids, and I know that I haven't, you know, you know, been as involved in what you've been doing or whatever lately, but I've really had to apply myself at work and now I'm getting a promotion and I thank you so much for being understanding instead of staying in that old pattern of still expecting them to come up to you at your level. You know what I'm saying? Or um, an enthusiasm that you have, you've been sharing with people and they really, really haven't heard you. Centering yourself, body, mind, and spirit is something that you'll be able to better do as you process all of that, maybe those expectations, because the gut chakra and the balsamic moon is the P in aspire. And so this is, again, that expectation, you know, she's returned from a very challenging journey and Aunt Em is there greeting her, but in complete disbelief of what she's sharing with her. And so we can expect people to appreciate what we're sharing, but they are coming from a different place. It doesn't make them wrong. It doesn't make them insensitive. It doesn't make them bad. It just makes them like every other person on the planet, you know, in their own space, doing their own thing. And that's balsamic moon energy, being in our own space. This is the energy right before the new moon, balsamic moon is download. And so you are downloading, if you're watching this before the new moon, and if you're not, you're downloading and you're processing all of this going on right now. And you might feel in your shadow position, new moon root chakra card, that these lessons that are coming up through this frustration, through this rage, are making you feel alienated and alone. Remember, Great Mother speaks um, in, through this channel and through this channel to those of us who are most estranged um from her due to, you know, the alienation from our birth mother. And so you may be feeling that again coming up. Maybe it's something you've already dealt with, mama drama trauma, and you've healed from it and you have good boundaries and you're good. But it's, this situation has triggered that. And that's in your shadow and you're processing that. And Great Mother's coming through and she's confirming for you that, yes, you do need to recenter because there's been some fears that have been brought up for you, not to condemn you, not to judge you, sweetheart, but to acknowledge that you're coming up on a full moon in Sagittarius where we can either have a full moon howling at the moon in fear and frustration and anger, or we can get back body, mind, spirit aligned and say, hey, what is it that I need to do to work with this lunar energy to align myself with it for my highest good? And for you, a new moon wish is going to have to do with purification because this is what's going to facilitate your recentering from this fear, from this rage. And purification um, is actually in the waxing gibbous moon phase, which is about revision. And so you are revising. And so even though you've already gone through this and this trigger is coming up, this trigger is coming up, again, not to condemn or to judge you or to cause you grief, but to further purify your healing. And so that heart healing, instead of the heart breaking all over again, which it very well may be doing through this experience of not being appreciated, not being seen, not being heard, it could just as well open the heart. And how we do that is with a new moon wish of to do exactly that. Great mother, please help me to easily and effortlessly open my heart to expressing my new project or communicating with my children or communicating with my cast mates or whatever your creative endeavor is in a way that is beneficial, most beneficial to myself and to others. Great mother, please help me to um, express myself in ways that are um, going to give me the results that I am seeking as it relates to, you know, connecting with others in loving ways. Those kinds of wishes are going to really help you to, you know, sing somewhere over the rainbow, connect to that lullaby that you've once heard. You know, um, healing is a cycle. And so we've been through these healing cycles where it feels really great. And so where were you then when it was feeling really great before? Kind of uh, remember that. Remember that energy as best as you can. 
um, and visualize um, where you want to be and how you want to be to uh, manifest it. This is the energy that is going to um, help open your heart and purify where you are now at this particular Libra new moon period to where you will be as we go into the Scorpio new moon, which is your outcome card, the Pele card. By that time, we're looking at crescent moon energy for you, which is planting. And so from this phase and your new moon wishes, should you um, follow through with the guidance that is provided here and from your own internal guidance, there will be an outcome of a clear awakening that you are truly a good witch. This is the scene when Dorothy arrives in Munchkin land and Glenda asks her, the munchkins want to know, are you a good witch or a bad witch? To which Dorothy replies, I'm not a witch at all. I'm Dorothy from Kansas. Now, a bad witch is a witch that uses her yin, emotional, intuitive energy to control and manipulate. A good witch is a person, individual, whatever. We all have yin-yang energy who uses his or her energy, her yin, emotional, intuitive energy for the betterment of all. So this is a very powerful um, outcome for you with gut chakra energy. Gut chakra is ruled by Mars and Mars rules Aries and Scorpio. So as we come up to that Scorpio new moon, there is a great awakening available for you. Thank you so much for watching and sharing. But above all and most of all, remember Great Mother loves you and I do too. The Great Mother Father God. A divine child of the Great Mother Father God. I'm a divine child of the Great Mother Father God. A divine child of the Great Mother Father God. I am Great Mother that stills my voice of the Holy Spirit and Divine Mother. Cosmic Moon.